Archbishop Odam, thank you very much for joining me to share your peace building experience um, about the LRA conflict, the Lord Resistance Army conflict. Um, so the Lord Resistance Army conflict began in northern Uganda. It's now spread to other countries in the region, the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Central African Republic, Southern Sudan. What challenges do you think this poses for peace builders? The, the biggest challenge is, you know, each of these countries may not take the issue as a priority. Mm. Yet, they may think of it also in the personal and the national level, instead of addressing it on the international and the regional, particularly regional level. And so what are the particular peace building needs that you see? The, I think we need to have it approached from down up, namely from the community, and push it up to the policy makers to connect so that we work all together. And so Archbishop, how are you working to respond to the conflict? Our approach has been on the interreligious group, um, Muslims, Catholics, Anglicans, Orthodox. We have joined together in the northern part of Uganda for the last 12 years. And our approach has been to have one voice for advocacy non-violence. We have experienced moments when the whole problem was approached by military means. It didn't go well. It was like throwing a, a stone at a swarm of bees. It spread to the rest of the uh, neighboring countries, ever escalating. So we said, no, this is not the best approach. We should go more for process of encountering the LRA moreover. We have the issue of reintegration, the issue of reconciliation, the issue of uh, resettlement of the people, and everything connected with the rebuilding. You cannot be investing in destruction. So we, we, we are proposing similar thing to the regional through the task force. This task force, we are also having people from Central Africa, from uh, Sudan, from uh, uh, DRC, Congo, and Uganda. We have built a good group. We have had meetings already. Uh, although the first meetings were hot, they had to attack us saying, you are the people who brought problems to us. Why did you export your problems from Uganda to us in Congo? What wrong did we do? At the end, we had to expose to them the suffering we had also gone through over 20 years. And this we told them, we are also victims, like them. So we should come together and see if we can address this thing together. At the end, the tension began to cool down. Now we can work together. That is a wonderful thing. And so, Archbishop, yeah. what has been the effect of this violence on communities in the newly affected countries? And what have, uh, has the Regional Civil Society Task Force been doing to help them? The effect of the the violence on the local communities in the areas now, in Congo, Central Africa, and the Sudan. They have uh, had a very unfortunate situation. From the latest statistics of uh, July 2010, UN, over 700,000 people have been internally displaced. And these are issues to address by the governments and by the international community to see that it is a priority issue to address. This is something we felt the task force need to alert these people. And we have been doing that through advocacy. We, have, we had planned to visit even the top leaders. This is a part of our agenda. And we want to also raise the voice of the population to rise up and advocate for themselves through the media, through radios, and also approach the LRA leadership. We are already prepared to do that because in Uganda we did it. But we want the support of the international community because it has become regional. So Archbishop, um, I understand that within the non-violent response that you're promoting, um, you're advocating for rebels to return from the Lord's Army back into their communities. 
How are you working with communities to facilitate that reconciliation and reintegration of uh, returning rebels? Um, maybe I can uh, share my experience in the north when we had what we call matter foot. Matter foot is a, a technical word in Acholi, which means uh, reconciliation, where we had uh, bringing in of the returnees, uniting them with their parents, and uh, preparing the parents to receive these people. Then we also went on radio, appealing to the LRP, say, please, we are happy to welcome you. Don't continue being in the bush. The way you are handling it, we don't want to lose you. Your lives are precious to us, to your parents, to your relatives. And you are still young. Why don't you come back home? So you've been working with conciliation resources for some years now. Um, how do you feel that conciliation resources helps you as a peace builder? And what do you think the value is of international NGOs um, supporting local civil society? Yeah, the, the role of the conciliation resource to our efforts in the peace building on the community level has been very much appreciated in Uganda, bringing to us the experiences from elsewhere in the world. Then they also helped us to see where to have our capacity built through workshops. Then also the occasion of offering us the opportunities of going out for advocacy. Like this time, I've had the opportunity of meeting the Archbishop of Canterbury. And I noticed that uh, he's a man who not only listens with the ear, but also listens with the heart. That was very, very touching for me. And for having seen the issue of what we call cross-border peace building, I think we have brought it through him also to the British government.